Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to a demonstration of the music that accompanied the armies during the American Revolution in the British and the American armies. Um, the music that we play is all music that has been researched back almost 250 years or more to the period of the American Revolution. So I'd like to share with you a little bit of what the purpose of fifes and drums in particular were and why music was such an important aspect of armies, army life during the uh, late 18th century in, in European and America uh, armies. So first of all, the tune we just played, anyone know what the purpose may have been? What did you notice? I started playing it. Did you notice anything after I started playing? Brings everybody together. That's right. I was joined by the other drummers and fifers because I played drummer's call. So the main function of fifes and drums in infantry regiments, infantry regiments are the foot soldiers, which was the main part of an army, is communications. You gotta think 250 years ago. No radios, no walkie-talkies, no cell phones, no megaphone, no, no, you know, megaphones even. Everything was by word of command. And the only way to assemble a lot of people in a hurry is to use some kind of instrument. And the drum has served that purpose for hundreds and hundreds of years, before, even before the American Revolution. It was accompanied by the fife, which is a flute-like instrument. Um, in the British Army, it was readopted in the 1740s. So it was relatively new by the time of the American Revolution. So the fife adds melody to the drum, which is the main signaling instrument. Now, before we get uh, into much more detail, I want to share with you we're going to be playing music that would have been played by both British and American congressional forces. Now, in the American Revolution, which lasted eight years, 1775 to 1783, the American colonies rebelled against the king and, and parliament, and they uh, raised armies and militias. The British were joined by loyal Americans. So when I say American, I uh, distinguish between Americans fighting for Congress, uh, later for independence, um, and versus the British forces, which included uh, men ma mainly from England, but also they recruited in Scotland and Ireland, as well as American who were loyal to the king. And you'll see them depicted today during the, this afternoon. So the music we're playing is both British and American. Can anyone venture a guess why Americans are playing British music? They changed the word. Exactly. So we were a British culture. Our heritage was from Great Britain. Most of our, our, our settlers here were from the, uh, from the Great Britain, uh, different provinces. Although we did have Germans in Pennsylvania and Swedes in Delaware and so on, primarily we were an Anglo American culture. So our taste in music and our knowledge of music and our knowledge of anything military came from Great Britain. In fact, we were obviously allies up until the American Revolution. The Americans fought valiantly during the French and Indian War about uh, 15 years previous to the American Revolution. All right, so drum as a signal instrument. So I'm, right now I'm going to speak about both music as it was played, used by the British and the Americans synonymously. So we're gonna have one of our drummers play a few signals. So one signal that would have been played would be something like when you wanna get water, the men can't just go off and get it on their own. They have to be accompanied by a corporal or a non-commissioned officer, uh, and they would have the water call. Very simple, two taps and a flam. And they would know that's the water call. So all the men assigned for the duty of getting the can. Now, every soldier wouldn't go get fill his canteen. They would send a representative with maybe five or six canteens and they would fill all the canteens. Um, so that was, that was one signal. Another signal that would be on the battlefield would be the preparative. 
and the preparative would be to, to basically prime and load and prepare to fire your weapon. Beat the preparative. So at that signal, the men would be loading their muskets. When they're all loaded, the officer sees that they're loaded, he would say, make ready. Present, they beat the weapon, fire. So everything was done by the drum because even though there were verbal commands, they couldn't always hear the verbal commands, the drum would help echo those commands. Also in battle would be the advance. You play the advance and you play the retreat. We're going to have a uh, you know, um, retreat. You know retreat? Okay, you know retreat. We're going to beat the, just the drum part of retreat. So on the battlefield, this, this retreat might be played. Okay, so when you hear that drum beating, that would be accompanied by fifes, and the men would know to withdraw it in an orderly fashion. Cease fire? <laughs> when I want the men to cease fire. So again, very simple commands. The men would be trained. They'd be doing this 20, you know, every day of, of you know, at the, in the British Army, men enlisted as a career. It was a career. So they may be in the Army for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, and they'd be doing this every day. So they would know instinctively what these commands meant. The American Army was a little different because it was created new for the American Revolution. So they were not necessarily as trained, although most men had experience in the militia in the colonies. So they had military experience and they may have been somewhat familiar. The other aspect of music would be to regulate your day. How do you know when to wake up? You heard the reveling. How to assemble the troop. So we're going to play the English reveille. There were other reveilles. There was the French reveille. I'm sorry, not French Reveille. There was the uh, Scotch Reveille, the English Reveille, and Americans used the same, same tune as the British until later in the war they started developing some of their own. So this is the English Reveille, also known as the Three Camps. only one drum and one fife. In a regiment, a regiment would consist of 10 companies. A company would be anywhere from 50 to 70 men. So a regiment, the basic structure of an army in the times was about maybe 500 to 700 men. Each company would have a drummer and a fifer. So imagine a regiment playing the assembly, of I'm sorry, the uh, reveille we could have 10 drums and 10 fifes marching in camp. Do you think that would wake you up? Yeah. Okay, so Reveille was played at sunrise to wake the camp. The next thing that would happen would be around eight o'clock in the morning and the drums would play the troop or assembling. They play the assembly. A troop had many functions, but one of the most important functions of a tune called the troop was to assemble the men and the men would assemble for roll call, make sure they were still there, and for inspection.
assembly. And there are many tunes with the same name, but different tunes that you, they use as troops. As you can imagine, it might get a little tedious to play the same thing all the time, so there are other troops as well. Uh, and the American Army, starting late, a little bit later, like in the mid-1770s, they started adopting new tunes to use, and they started to diverge from their British origins. So even though they still played the three camps, uh, for the Reveille, for example, they started adding other tunes that they would use for, for, to assemble the men. At sunset, the men's day was over in a, in a typical encampment or in a fortification in a fort like Fort Lee. So at, at sunset, the men would be told they're off duty by the playing of the retreat. So the same tune used on the battlefield, they would play in camp or in a fort to signal they're off duty. They would mount guards, and then the rest of the men would be off duty to take care of cooking their dinner or, or cleaning their weapons or doing their laundry and so on. And the final duty of the day would be the tattoo. That tattoo was played in winter time at about eight o'clock because it was dark already, at 10 o'clock in summer, and that was basically signal lights out. They said, go to your, go to your tents, I don't want to see you till tomorrow morning, till Reveille. So that was how music would help regulate the day, kind of function as a clock. Let me take a moment to share what we're dressed as. So you'll notice we have mixed uniforms. We have three glorious uniforms that are buff and red. That's my regiment, the 22nd Regiment of Foot. Um, the buff is this kind of a beige or tan color. Um, our regiment you'll see hanging out in the back over there. And notice that their coats are a little different. Is that the, uh, is that the 22nd? I think so. I think so. Is the, where's your regiment? Uh, that's a good one. Okay. There's one over here. Uh, can I bring you up for a second? So we have a um, private, private soldier. 54th Regiment of Foot, red coat faced in green. These are called the facings, the lapels, the cuffs, and the collar were how regiments were distinguished. There's an officer marching up in the back. If he comes up, I'm gonna have to salute him. Um, but he's got a little fancier uniform with some lace, but red faced green. The drummer is wearing green faced red. So he's wearing the opposite colors. And that's what the 22nd Regiment is doing as well. And that was a typical custom of uh, English forces to reverse the colors so that the drummers could be found quickly. Imagine having 500 men in red coats and 20 in green coats. You'll find the drummer pretty quickly. Uh, our drummer is from the 5th Connecticut Regiment. The 5th Connecticut Regiment wore blue faced in red. Uh, did you guys reverse colors? So the 5th Connecticut did not reverse colors. Unfortunately, this is an expensive hobby, so you sometimes have to choose which coat you get. Um, so this would be an infantry coat. Um, there's, doc there's a couple of different coats that the 5th Connecticut is documented with wearing. The most atrocious one is a yellow coat with brown facings. Oh, you gotta get that one. Who, who thought that was a good idea? I'm not entirely certain. Makes. <laughs> You'll find them quick, I'll give you that. Yeah. But um, So the American Army, having a British heritage, would either reverse colors, so, now he has a blue-faced red. A lot of other American regiments, Virginia regiments had blue-faced red, uh, Maryland regiments had blue-faced red, and so on. Um, they would reverse colors, and you'd have American drummers and fifers wearing red coats. His regiment, didn't do that, but they had a yellow coat faced in brown. So they were distinguished in some way because the officers needed to find that drummer because that was their that was their walkie-talkie, that was their radio. Thank you. So we're we're friends today, foes this afternoon, but but we are playing the same music and we're doing for our music demo. Um, so our fifer, our fife is a very shrill instrument. You could hear it over long distances, that's why this was used. A uh, very simple instrument, but it also could be heard and carries a nice melody. And the drum is a snare drum called rope tension because the ropes tighten the head. The head is made out of uh, calf skin or, or goat skin, uh, very thin goat skin or calf skin. And um, when you tighten the ropes, it get, makes a nice uh, sharp uh, 
sharp sound. So what helped make it sharp is these nice things called gut snares. They would have been twisted pieces of rawhide or something like that um, that you put across the head. Now, here's what it sounds like with the snares on. That's terrible. <laughs> Hold on. Going to tighten it up. Loosen it a little bit. Too tight. All right. So now if I turn that completely off, Sounds a lot flatter and you don't hear it nearly as far. So they added snares to their drums so they could be heard over the dead and dying. Hearing over the dead's a lot easier than the dying, by the way. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> All right, anyway, so we have snare drums. Uh, and again, dr snare drums and fifes are both exclusively military instruments. This is not something you want to play in your parlor or your current living room. Too shrill. Even though it's a flute, it's very, very high pitched. It's meant for outdoors to carry, and it became a military instrument. And it, it, the tradition has continued to this day because there are modern fife and drum corps that still play fife and drum. Okay, we're going to play some uh, more. The, one of the more pleasant parts of military discipline was to raise morale and keep the men in step. And to keep men in step, they would play marches. British and Americans marched at two different tempos. They marched at the common step, and the common step in the British Army was one step per second, marching basically like this. It's unheard of today, but that's the common step. And then they invented in the 1760s the quick step, which was double the speed. And now you're marching two steps per second. At about 120, you're marching, which is what modern army does today. Um, are we good with Belisle? Which one drummer? Which is that? Which one? We're going to play Belisle March, which would be a common march. Life's up. Down in front. How, how stately and relatively slow it is by today's standards, that would be unheard of. They also invented quick marches if they wanted to get anywhere more quickly. And that's what we mostly play today in the reenacting community. Uh, but the common marches should be played more frequently than we do, actually. So we're going to play a number of favorite airs or marches that will hopefully raise your spirits and cite your patriotism. If you're loyal to the king, you sing the British Grenadiers. If you're loyal to Congress, you sing Free America. Same tune, different words. So I'm gonna say British Grenadiers. Sing that 
Excuse my very poor singing voice. Um, British Grenadiers is something like some talk of Alexander and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander and such great names as these. But of all the world's brave heroes, there's none that can compare to the tow row 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 of the British Grenadier. Or if you're fighting for George Washington, that seat of science Athens and Earth's proud mistress Rome, where now are all your glories, you scarce can find a tomb. Now guard your rights, Americans, nor stoop to lawless sway. Oppose, 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 oppose for free, America. <laughs> Same tune. And by the way, don't ask me more, that's the only lyrics I memorized. Because <laughs> I'm always playing this. Much better at this than singing. Um, anyway, so again, Americans adopted British music, but they may have changed the words. Um, one that we um, will play later today, and maybe at the end of the demonstration. Um, I I'll, I'll save that for later. All right, another tune that is affiliated with the American Revolution. Yankee Doodle. Um, how much, what time, do you have time? Is it your time? We've got probably about five minutes. Okay. So if you want to set up, we'll just, can you set Okay. Can, can we have like like two more tunes? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna play two more tunes. So the tune we're gonna play is probably most affiliated with the American Revolution, Yankee Doodle. It has lyrics that are patriotic for the Americans, and the British lyrics kind of mock the Americans. Yankee Doodle. What's up? Here with our artillery demonstration, we'll play one more tune. The tune that I was, uh, we'll play later today, but the tune I was gonna tell you about is God Save the King. <laughs> the British National Anthem, which became God Save the Queen, and now it's back to God Save the King, was written in the 1740s, very popular in America, but they changed the words to God Save Great Washington. You know it today as My Country Tis of Thee. And it is the national anthem for great for the United Kingdom to this, to this day. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, we're gonna play a, a six-eight tune. It's called the uh, French Quick March or the Casino. Thank you so much. You. I appreciate your, your attention. I hope you learned a little bit about how music uh, functioned in the 18th century. And we're going to give the stage over to our friends in the Royal Artillery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.